Hey everybody, how's it going? I know we're, some of us are all uh, still in a little shock over the trade for D Ford last night. Um, and I wanted to put together a little video. I've just watched the first couple games he played and a little bit of the game against us. I just wanted to see, you know, it's one thing to see this guy has a lot of pressures. It's one thing to see he had 13 sacks. Um, but the question comes, is he a one-trick pony? Is he a one-year wonder kind of a thing? What does this guy bring to the table as far as a pass rusher? Um, and watching his the film, uh, the guy's got some skills. Uh, he's got some ability that we desperately need. He's a guy you can move up and down the line. I know we're all worried about that. We've heard that before, um, but he truly is. So I wanted to show uh, there's going to be quite a number of clips here just because I, I, I think sometimes we have to see things in succession and, and the amount of clips there are to really get an understanding of what a guy does. So here this is the first game of the year that uh, Kansas City played against um, the Chargers. Now, he had been going up against Russell Okung right here. Also, I'm trying a new cursor. Uh, somebody said that it was hard to see on the videos and was pretty much like it wasn't even there. So let me know in the comments or uh, at 49erswebzone.com in the forum um, what you think of the new cursor, if this is good, bad, indifferent. So... Um, so he'd been going against Russell Okung. Russell Okung was was doing a really good job against him. Um, of course, Russell Okung does a really good job against most pass rushers. Um, and so what what Kansas City does here is they they try and get favorable matchups. So what they do is they come out in their nickel. They're going to bring their linebacker over the middle, and then they're going to swap their outside guys with their inside guys. So H Justin Houston and D Ford end up inside, and this defensive tackle who's on the D end, he's going to take a wide angle and that's going to leave D Ford one-on-one -on -one versus his guard. Now, the one concern I know some of us had about D Ford is, is he just this speed guy off the edge? Is he just, is it just about this burst and bend around the edge? Um, is he going to be a one trick pony? Kind of like a, a lot of us thought about uh, Harold Landry coming out of college. We're going to see him here matched up against his guard, and watch for this. He's What he's going to do is he's going to come in, take a jab step inside, get this guard to get get off his balance, move over a little bit, and then use a fierce um, hand move to get this guy's hands off of him. Uh, he's got a, a really good move, comes swim move, comes through here, um, and beats the guard. So let's watch this. I'm going to play this in real time so you can see it. And he gets the sack. That's really fast. I timed it. It was right around two and a half seconds. Um, when a quarterback has to get rid of the ball in two and a half seconds, that's pretty good. Let's do this in slow motion. You can watch how he does this. He takes a jab step inside, gets the guard to shift his weight, and then fights his hands off and just pushes and fights through. He's able to get the bend and keeps his balance to get the sack. It's a good play. Um, that's a dangerous weapon when you can put a guy like that inside and he can do that. So now we're going to move to a little bit later in this game against the Chargers. Here he's going against the right tackle. And one thing, he does jump the snap a little bit here. He pretty much times out the snap perfectly. Now, sometimes that can be good. Sometimes it can cost you. But he's going to time the snap perfectly and jump around the edge and just completely leave this tackle in the dust. So let's watch this. And he gets a hit on the quarterback. Now, their coverage didn't hold up too much in the end. It was an incomplete pass, um, mainly because Melvin Gordon dropped the ball. Um, but let's watch this in slow motion. You'll see how he jumps jumps the snap a little bit here. But just watch how quickly his first three steps, he gains ground. On his third step, he's at the edge. He's on the corner, and he's bending around. Um, just completely dominates the right tackle. Um, that's a skill that we have not had here, that a guy has this kind of burst around, burst and bend around the edge. I know one thing we talked a lot about last year during the draft was this kind of bend, a guy who can hit the arc and bend around the corner. That's what that's what we've been missing. And so that now here we I want to show how he uses that speed and that burst around the end to his advantage. This is the very next play. And so what he's going to do is he's going to set this tackle up. Now this tackle's just been burned, so he's going to take a really wide set. He's going to drop back, and he's going to flip his hips, and that's when he knows he's going to slip inside. So let's watch this. He sets him up and comes right inside and gets a hit on the quarterback. Now 
uh, LA ends up getting a touchdown on this play. That's again more to do with the with the secondary than anything he did because he did he did what you ask. He caught a hit on the quarterback really quickly. So let's watch this. You can see this tackle because he's so worried about that is setback. He's on his heels already, and so he's not able to be in any sort of position to adjust to his move. I mean, he gets away with a block in the back, really. But let's go back and watch this again. Um, and I'll try and pause it here just to show something. I know it's super slow motion. You're all probably getting really, come on. That right here, you see how wide this tackle had to set, and he's back on his heels. Usually, tackles want to be in a 45-degree angle. They want their head a little bit lower as as they they set so that they can they can take on a bull rush and move side to side. Because he's set so far out, all he can do is throw a punch here at Ford, who, again, he's got this nasty arm over move where he can just fight away a guy's one arm and then he's got the burst to come in and make a hit on, get a hit on the quarterback. I mean that that's what you want from an edge rusher. That's that's what we've been missing is a guy who can just who can win a one on one on the edge. Let's do this not in slow motion. You can see how quickly he beats his guy. And I mean Rivers is throwing this ball up off his back foot. That's what you want from a quarterback and well their secondary can't take advantage. So again here here's yet another play against LA he's again against the right tackle and he's going to do a similar move he's going to set this guy up wide and then come inside this time there's a guard that's going to be able to help him because they're only in a three-man rush and he still wins the battle so let's watch this one he does the same thing completely turns the right tackle around he gets help from the guard and still ends up putting a pressure on the quarterback and getting a hit um if we take this back you can see Look at how upright that tackle is. Look at that compared to Russell Okung over here, who is squatted down in a nice base. This is not what a tackle wants to do when he's setting up for a pass protection. Because And why is he doing this? Because he has to respect that edge and that speed so much that he's setting such a wide angle. And Ford is able to do this while also keeping his hips square. He keeps a low base, and he's got the athleticism and the body control to slip inside. And he, I mean, he turns the right tackle completely around, and the guard's even there, and he's not even ready for it all because he can't even get out there. And, I mean, when one guy can beat two linemen to put pressure on a quarterback, that's pretty special. Um, and this is something, again, I know I've said it several times, but it's something we've sorely needed. We've needed this so bad. So now we're going to go to the Steelers. And here, again, Kansas City's just coming with a three-man rush. And what he's going to do is he's going to, again, use this burst off the edge to set up this tackle. This tackle is going to set so wide that he he just he has no place position of power. So I'm going to do this in slow motion. You can watch how it goes. One, he beats the tackle off the, the go, and the tackle has to turn. He sees him and is able to transition to power and throw the guy on his high quarters. Now... The sorry, I got a message real in the middle of it. Um, the the guard is able to come over, but that's the only thing that saves Roth or Roethlisberger is that it's a three man rush, and the guard is able to step over in the last minute. But just to have a guy that can beat a tackle this bad is is something. Um, that this tackle has to just turn and run. I mean, that's not what you want because that's what happens to a tackle. This is who we're getting with D Ford, a guy who not only has the speed rush, but knows how to use that speed rush. There's a big difference sometimes. And so then here, here's another play um, in the Steelers game. We're going to see here, he just fights and bends around the edge. I should have, sorry, I should have pointed out where he was. He's again working against the left tackle, and he's going to take a jab step in and then, then use his bend around the arc to get to the quarterback he gets in and has that bend around the quarterback and the only thing again that saves that saves the Steelers here is that they end up having a bust in the coverage in the back end but again that's not on him he's he's able to you can see where he's at here he has this kind of ability to where he can go turn the corner with this kind of bend and angle 
that's that's that kind of special ability that not a lot of human beings have and the guys that can do this um, get paid a lot of money and that's why we we got him so now the last one I want to show is against us D Ford's over here he's gonna be going against our own Joe Staley now we all know how good Joe Staley is and so we're gonna see Joe here going against D Ford this is in I believe the second drive of the game that we had um, we'll do this in slow motion that his burst around the edge is what makes him so deadly but also what he can do with it see he gets out so quickly we've seen this before he did that to the Steelers left tackle too where he in the Chargers right tackle where he bursts out of his stance so quickly this is also a good example of him in a wide nine hand in the dirt because then I know some questions are going to be how how is he as a rusher um, in our defense being in this wide nine hand in the dirt um, because he did rush a lot of times uh, in Kansas City standing up um, but here you can see he's got the same burst he's got the same ability to go around the edge we'll do this in, in real time as you can see that he just straight up beats Joe Staley I mean I know we all complained about quarterback hits last year this is one you can't really blame your offensive line too much I mean that's Joe that's that's one of the best pass rushers in the league and that's not on our wide receivers that's not on our quarterback that's just one of our our best our, our best offensive linemen getting his rear end handed to him um, by a very good player and he's just he's got that special ability to burst and bend around the corner and uh, on top of it as I showed before he can he then can use that to set up other moves not all guys can do that he can transition from speed to power from speed to a cut inside speed with hand moves that not everybody can do and so it's really exciting what he brings to the table as a pass rusher